here again. And I thank you very much for a very kind introduction. Anything. Today, um, I'd like to just talk about the multi scale modeling of the structure concrete. But this is a. Uh, uh, so, it used to be my hobby, uh, all these topics. Then, uh, this is one of the results. Uh, I'm going to talk about this issue. My colleague, Professor Ishida, who visited here uh, with the statisticals and also uh, multi scale modeling, uh, we also estimate the remaining life of the bridges along the urban highways in the Tokyo area. Uh, this type of simulations uh, is very much important things. Okay. Uh, but first, for me, the first, first applications of the multi-scale model is, is, the, is, uh, is addressed to the new runway of the Haneda Airport. This is an international airport just close to the city of Tokyo. Uh, because of the increase in the uh, you know, aircraft traffic, one, one uh, no, uh, runway was made. But unfortunately, no place, no place to construct new runways. Therefore, the government decided to construct the runway uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the sea. So putting a lot of piles, so many piles, many piles, after that, about 14,000 plates are you know, arranged on this one. And these are connected with the reinforced concrete. But in this case, 400 ton force is aircraft force. At the same time, we are going to use this uh, airport about the next 100 years. Maybe there were 10 million cycle or so touched down. Therefore, uh, but we have no experiences. In case of the fatigue of the road, the maximum about 40 ton, 50 ton, sometimes illegal, some 80, 80 ton force. <laughs> and also I heard that in China, 880 ton force trucks, so some bridge collapse. But anyway, 400 ton force. Of course, we did some experiment, but I think so some multi-scale analysis uh, has been applied for the check of the, uh, I have to say, uh, designs. But other times, I encountered some difficulty. When some problems happen, regardless of my you know, ass assessment, what happens? Uh, one government official said, that, oh, Professor Mike, you will be hanged. <laughs> but anyway, constructed by your company, Kajima Corporations. I suppose maybe Kajima Corporation director should be hanged together with me. But anyway, very fortunately, no problem at this moment, even after 15 years after this opening. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, when I use this uh, aircraft, so looking at this. Anyway, so, but here we have to talk about the life, remaining life of the infrastructures, which was already used, already used. Uh, when we construct a new structure from now on. Uh, so it is not so much difficult to assess the remaining life, uh, assess the expected life. But uh, some old structures uh, have been used in the past several uh, decades. Already some cracks exist, some water, uh, some leakage, some damage, corrosion. Occurs. Therefore, we have to say something. How many years this bridge can serve to the society? Another thing is that when we repair these structures by doing something, how long this structure life will be extended? Otherwise, government peoples or managers cannot allocate money, valuable money, for these infrastructures. Therefore, uh, after crackings, uh, you know that some life is a little bit shortened, but how many years? Then, uh, uh, this is a fatigue experiment. When we apply the uh, cyclic load like this, deflection is increasing, increasing, increasing. Uh, this is the figures of deflections versus number of cycles. Uh, this is a logarithmic scale. And then, around here, just uh, 0.1 million cycles, some, some cracks, but not so much. But around 3 million cycles, many cracks. Uh, 20 
or 30 uh, million cycles, so many. Then you may you understand that so life, remaining life is really short. Then this is the uh, target of the multi scale model in this. Uh, how to calculate uh, this remaining life with the existing clocks? Uh, this was developed by Fujiyama sensei. Therefore, I would like to skip this one. All right, therefore, any questions should be addressed to her. Okay. But anyway, when we have a large number of clocks, maybe many people suppose that, okay, maybe remaining, remaining life is not so much large. Few clocks, that's okay, but uh, we have to say something quality, quantitatively. Otherwise, you know, some uh, chief persons who are responsible for money allocations cannot do anything. Okay. This is important things. So, but uh, here also uh, we have some other big problems of the water. It is, it is known that when we have a water, so fatigue life is very much shortened. Then this one is the uh, real uh, structure bridge decks. This is uh, removed from the bridges, but uh, some water, uh, in, there is a, uh, sorry, there is a uh, asphalt pavement. In between asphalt pavement and concrete, some water may remain. In these situations, the concrete around here is so nasty, so much deteriorated indeed. Then the life is so much shortened. Then um, uh, uh, the professors of the Tokyo Institute of Technologies to the Chijiwa did the very uh, shocking experiments. I will just show, show you this one. <clears throat> Could you understand me? So, this one is a very simple fatigue experiment. Uh, this steel plate is embedded in the concrete footing. At the head of the concrete, ahead of the steel, uh, we have some sort of anchorage. Then uh, when this one, is, applied force is about 6% of the final capacity. Therefore, uh, when we apply the fatigue load, about the, maybe 20 million cycles or something, but anyhow, nothing happens. Nothing happens. But he put some water, stagnant water, on these footings. Under these cycles, water can come inside this, between the face of the steel plates and concrete, coming here. In this case, maybe around one or 2,000 cycles, it happens. So I think also uh, some impact of the water uh, to the structural behavior of so, uh, concrete will be discussed by uh, Professor Fujiyama. Therefore, I would like to leave this uh, picture, but uh, like this. If we have no water, uh, 10, uh, 20 or 30 million cycles, but this one, like this, a few bit. Uh, but uh, uh, the same thing happened to the uh, concrete bridge decks. Therefore, every bridge engineer know that drainage of the water is very much important for the life of the pavement or bridges. Not only the concrete bridges, but also some pavement on the ground. So water is always the big problems. But there's so much surprising things. However, uh, but one of the reasons is that water is coming here, apply the load, uh, we uh, check the pressure inside this one. Pressure level is around one or two megapascals. Yeah. Almost the same level of the you know, tap water. At the same time, ten, one or two megapascals is also similar to the, to the strength of, tensile strength of concrete. Therefore, when we have a uh, you know, pressure rise down inside this concrete, uh, this pressure can come to the capillary pores. But you know that the capillary pores is a, a little bit large, microscopic, micrometascopic, micrometer size. Always this capillary pores is around the interface zones between the surface of the aggregates and cement paste. Therefore, very big, you know, cyclic pre water pressure comes 
around the aggregates. Therefore, these integrations can come to us. This. Therefore, when we use this type of concrete like this, then if you encounter this problem, how to solve these problems? So uh, Professor Chijiwa said that capillary pore is a big problem. OK, let us use concrete without any capillary pores. Then you see, when the water to cement ratio is less than 51%, 51%, capillary pore disappear. Almost all pore is a gel pores, or micrometer scale. But the W by C, water to cement ratio, if this is about 55%, 70% of the concrete void is a capillary pores. Therefore, when we use the 51 or less water to cement ratio, nothing happens. But when we use the 55% water to cement ratio, it's a very much nasty and miserable. But the W by C, 50% and 55% strength difference is very small. Not so much. But the performance against the water is quite different. Therefore, uh, W by C 50% concrete, and W by C 55% concrete, different materials. We should consider these different materials. Therefore, uh, in, I, I check this design code for all over the world. Uh, according to experiences, the many countries said that for marine concrete structures, always exposed to the water, water to cement ratio should be less than 50%. This is a deep experience, maybe. Okay. Then uh, we have, but uh, unfortunately, many bridges were constructed at all days. In those days, uh, so W by C in Japan was so much higher. Uh, but anyhow, we have to uh, play with this all concrete. Now, this is also, there, anyway, uh, with this one, we can uh, roughly estimate uh, this life, remaining life, uh, by using multi-scale models, because this is an interaction of the water inside this concrete and uh, the solids. Well, then, so in the past, uh, we know that the knowledge of the microscopic, this is a, a territory of the cement concrete science. And also, we know some sort of the frameworks of the structure concrete. Uh, so many information is written in the structural mechanics. But in order to connect this knowledge and this knowledge, we need uh, some modelings around the meso scales. Uh, this is just some size of the clackings and so on and so on. I think now the uh, uh, Professor Yani san uh, challenged some geopolymers. Geopolymers properties around here is quite different from concrete. Strength of concrete is not so much different from the normal concrete with CSH, 12 mite, but uh, this world is much different. Therefore, but in the past, this world, these areas could not be clearly seen like this. But many people in the past uh, focus on these behaviors as a research and this research. But I think in between two, we need something. So then when we consider the uh, impact of the water inside this concrete, this is driven by the, an external load. Some life will be shortened. This can be, <coughs> uh, roughly speaking, obtained. So then with this one, uh, we are now uh, offering some expected life according to the uh, water conditions. But uh, unfortunately, it is very difficult to see where is the water <laughs> for bridges. Very difficult because in case of concrete uh, in Japan, bridge surface is covered by asphalt. But asphalt, but in, be, between asphalt and concrete, we can have some water. Therefore, it's very difficult to see the location by naked eyes. But uh, as I said, the water has a very strong impact. The cracking can be seen from the bottoms. It's okay, but uh, like this. Then, uh, one guy uh, used this uh, uh, electromagnetic radar. So then having some you know, uh, radar, some repulsion comes. Then uh, when water exists, uh, repulsion situation is quite uh, affected by that. 
in fact, radar is a, a very good uh, detector for the water. In fact, uh, you know that so in order to obtain the location of the cloud, always we have some, you know, meteorological radar. Uh, but I think this is good for water. Then I heard that about, uh, about uh, 2.5 centimeters, uh, one scans. Then uh, we can drive about one hour for 100 years, 100 kilometers. All the informations are taken. Then the car, inspection car, coming back to the station for about one or two hours. Other times, almost all analysis was done like this one. Uh, this was done by the uh, students. He is now the professor of Tokyo University, uh, by the civil engineering. But I think uh, civil engineering professions, uh, maybe I must, uh, you agree or not, uh, civil engineers have to say that everything is my business. <laughs> you see? You, you, if you refuse something, this is not the civil engineers. If you receive some you know, missions or some requests, so you have to say, yes, this is my business. This is a qualification of civil engineers. Therefore, uh, he, uh, he accepted these proposals. But unfortunately, uh, professors of the civil engineer have no backgrounds about the radar. Therefore, we sent the excellent student to the Tokyo Institute of Technology, not civil engineering, but the electrical engineering. And I asked him to spend around half a year. At the same time, uh, he could attend the you know, laboratory party. That's good. So then they could get their some knowledge and they come back to the civil engineering and make this one, yes. Then when we have some uh, <coughs> uh, locations of the water, uh, then uh, the yellow one is uh, the risky area with, the, with water. Then this water location is uh, you know, digitalized and this information is used as the initial uh, input values of the multi-scale simulations. Here, for example, you can see some clackings, uh, but I think the clacking patterns is very much uh, complex. Uh, we pick up the clacking pattern from all over the Japan. Many different clacking patterns. Therefore, each clacking pattern has its own life. Then, through this analysis, uh, we obtain very interesting information. Uh, this, this process was you know, analyzed by the artificial intelligence, neural networks. Then, but there are so many you know, information run, but it is very difficult for us to uh, ask neural networks, how do you capture this knowledge? But neural network never answer. But I think a uh, very simple uh, one layer neural networks was used, then from this in fact, it is found that the neural networks or some simulation said that when the crack is around the corner, so it is much risky. Not only the center, but also the corner. When the water is existing, so computer programs do not, are not interested in the cracking around the center. Always the uh, computer AI, uh, artificial intelligence, direct their attention to the cracking around this. Could you understand me? When I received this report from the PhD students, I was very much surprised. Because when we collect around 100 inspectors, bridge inspectors, about one or two percent so excellent uh, bridge engineers pay much attention to the cracking around this part. Okay. But many inspectors, many engineers, look at the center of the slabs. Oh my God, so many clocks, so many clocks, so many clocks. According to the number of clocks, they judge, oh, the life is like this, life is like this. But the very excellent top level engineers pay much attention to the corner part. And in case of the water, so inspector, I know that inspector never look at this center. Always they are looking at the you know, corners. So this is a, a vision of the prof truly professionals. But I think artificial intelligence has the same results. Same results. 
Then I was so much surprised. AI can be a very good tool. This can be equivalent to the top inspectors. Then here I have one question. Why this corner crack is important for the life assessment? Right. So when you have uh, some background of structural engineering and material science, you can say that. In this, this slab is supported by the girders, right? Therefore, the maximum bending moment comes at the center of the slabs. Therefore, cracking around the center, large number, is, is very much natural. But the corner, right, in case of the you know, continuous, so counter moment is applied. Therefore, the side is in bending compressions, never come to the tension around these corners. But if the crack comes to this corner, some cracks cannot be explained by the concept of the bending. Something wrong, right? Like this. Right. Then, but unfortunately, uh, so in the past, so training of the inspect inspector based upon the material engineering science, uh, not uh, you know, uh, including the uh, basis of the structural engineering. Therefore, so trainers, a trainee, uh, can judge how many cracks, but that's all. But locations, but this is a very tough place. I said that breathing from the knees, breathing from the ears, maybe here, like this, breathing from the ears. And one thing, so this corner part, a few counter bending moment in compression, at the same time, you see the shear force becomes maximum. Shear force is so high, bending compression, no cracking in bending, but crack exists. It means that there is a shear. But the shear is a very much serious problem for structural concrete. Then that's, then AI, AI can run. That's one point. But anyway, but, but anyway, this, this is not the end of the story. So concrete uh, structures are exposed to the natural environment. In case of Japan, in the northern part of Japan, it's very cold weather. A snowfall, sometimes freezing, thawing, sometimes uh, in order to uh, spray, uh, for spraying the de-icing salt on the decks, corrosions of reinforcing bars are accelerated. Therefore, we have to also say something. But multi-scale modeling can combine the knowledge of the corrosions uh, of, uh, around the reinforcing bars. So some corrosion may create some crackings. And also when we have some freezing, some water is expanding from liquid water to the ice, then sometimes concrete will be broken. And this is uh, cycled. Uh, and when I applied some uh, stagnant, stagnant water under the repeated load, also pressurized. The same things, uh, concrete inside, have some sort of the pressure cyclic pressure. Then the same frameworks are supplied for that. Uh, maybe I think uh, any sun, uh, ASR exists in Indonesia? No. no. Very, rare. Very rare. Okay. Yeah. You're lucky. Yes. Uh, because uh, uh, ASR is, uh, uh, is uh, some sort of the damage of the concrete. Alkali agreed reactions. Uh, but this is a big problem in, in U.S. and European countries because the alkali, high alkalinity may create some gels around the you know, aggregates. Then this one uh, expand uh, so much. Therefore, uh, cracking occurred on this one. Then it's a big problem. Therefore, if we have an ASR, many people say that this is some sort of a cancer of, of the human body. It's so much miserable. Then, we did also uh, some analysis, but before the analysis, uh, some engineers reported that what, what by running the multi-scale modeling, ASL expansion, structural mechanics, and fatigues, uh, answer was that when the ASL occur, right, life of the structure is prolonged. Yes, this is a calculation, simulations. Therefore, you know, you know that so any computer program have a lot of bug. 
okay, the perfect computer program not, not exist. But anyway, I suppose that, oh my God, there must be some sort of plus or minus. But uh, when we apply the uh, expansions of aggregates, SL, fatigue life is longer. Yeah. At the same time, this has been known by the experiment of the you know, uh, railway engineering. The same thing was predicted for bridges. But uh, ASR is a very miserable, so much clacks, very much. But the life of the structures is prolonged. Uh, in case of the normal concrete, if we have a water on the structures, I said that life is shortened about 100 times, 1,000 times shorter. But when we put the water, because I you are killed, the water of ASR and damage to and a priority. When the corrosion occurs, life is short. The big problem is that when the corrosion occurs, bottom rate causes. We have a top rate causing the bottom rate causing. When we have a corrosion, the bottom rate causing, life is not changed. Nothing, almost. But that.